What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Bootleg Studios of Rant Social. And in this episode, I'm going to continue the theme about uh, religious confusion uh, amongst the so-called black community, in the so-called black community. And with all this talk about Kyrie Irving and him posting a link to a Amazon uh, to Amazon for a documentary called From Hebrews to Negroes and the uh, Jewish media uh, laying down their, their 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 punishment for Kyrie. They have a list of six things they want him to do <laughs> before he can come back to the NBA, so on and so forth. I'm pretty sure most of you know the story. I'm pretty sure most of you are aware of what's going on with Kanye West. And this has sparked a lot of talk, once again, about alternate religions and alternate cultures within the so-called black community. Some of us uh, adopting Judaism, becoming Jews, um, or uh, what they call, not transitioning, uh, adopting uh the Jewish religion, um, you have people adopting Hebrew, the Hebrew Israelite religion. You, you've always had people who were part of the nation of Islam, part of different Christian uh, sects. Um, you have people that were five percenters. You have uh, black folk that are atheists, so on and so forth. Anyway. In my last video, I just mentioned the fact that we, we didn't have one uniform religion or culture to stand on to where we all can be united spiritually, mentally, and financially uh, as we really don't spend uh, the black dollar amongst black people for the most part. The black dollar, we accumulate the black dollar. It comes in our community and out of our community. Uh, um, but anyway, I want to focus on the fact that I feel that a lot of these guys claiming Hebrew Israelites and claiming that they were original Jews. Um, some people like Dane Calloway is claiming that most African Americans were Native Americans and he makes a, a very good case for that. Very detailed in his research. But what I want to speak about is how I feel that a lot of these modern, not modern, but a lot of these new takes on religion and things of that nature, people are reaching for a majestic past and overlooking their slave ancestry because they're ashamed. And in this video, I want to get into a lot of the contributions that uh, slaves and, rel and, 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 and descendants of slaves in this country, the inventions and the scientific things that we accomplished that uh, should not be ashamed of, that should be held in higher regard than a lot of these Jewish, Hebrew, Israelite, and Muslim groups like to give our ancestors credit for. And so I'm going to begin with uh, the father, Dick Gregory, who passed away recently, talking about a couple of things black people invented. Let's go. When, when Stephen Fletcher, a lot of y'all probably never heard of him, but when Stephen Fletcher, he made more money than anybody in Hollywood, black or white. Why? Because the white folk came to see him to tighten up the stereotypes, and black folk crumb because the most powerful thing on the planet was that movie thing. But most black folks don't even know black folks invented the movies. Why are you talking about Oscar? What was Oscar's first name? Oscar Michelle. Why do you think Oscar looked like me and you? Huh? That's what it's about. So you look at you look at ice hockey, one of the big things going for white folks. Black runaway slaves went to Canada. They invented ice hockey. And a guy named, <laughs> named Richard Stanley came to look at me and become a Stanley Cup. Mm -hmm. yeah, so that's what all of this stuff is about. And then... I even uh, read somewhere where uh, the uh, former slaves who had went up to Canada and invented the game of ice hockey, the slap shot, 
in ice hockey was actually invented by a, for lack of better words, a black midget who uh, created that shot. One day, uh, you've heard the word tall, dark, and handsome? Yes, sir. They never called Sidney Poitier that, or in the front of that. Those are white boys that they know is passing. Clark Gable and all that. That's who uh, you've never heard. He mentions a key point about ple people like Clark Gable uh, passing as white. Uh, my grandfather uh, passed as Italian because his father was was an Irish immigrant. So this went, th uh, this happened quite a lot amongst our community back in the day. But we're going to come off of Dick Gregory and we're going to go to another short video about uh, blacks inventing ice hockey. Thank you. I would like to go to the subject um, because the, getting to the root of black inventions, you know, people talk about black history and black history month and all that, and that's all well and fine. But I, I think that to get to the root of black inventions, uh, one has to determine what white people love the most. Currently, there are two things young white boys historically like very much especially after World War II. This has been ongoing over the decades. That's rock and roll and the game of hockey. Uh, this, this story began in Nova Scotia, by way of New York and the Underground Railroad especially. But during slavery, you know, uh, a lot of people don't know this, that's when the game of hockey was invented and it, it, was, it started in Canada. When I was in high school, I marveled at stories about one lone hockey player that I would hear about every now and then, or an NHL, you know, playing for an NHL or minor league team. Um, white boys in South Buffalo, they were, they, were, they were rest assured that, you know, hockey was their sport. They were confident that hockey was their, was their, was their game. A little did I or they uh, know that in the beginning, Way before the NHL, hockey was blacker than basketball. A lot of people don't realize it. I, I wrote some things down uh, about that because I, I think there are a lot of things that need to be revealed that have been deliberately hidden from us. We talk about one black hockey player or, or whatever, or, or even back in those days an all-black hockey team. How about a black hockey league? or leagues, plural. That's what was going on. You know, uh, you white kids, a lot of white kids out there, especially from Boston, who cursed and... and okay, so we got hockey and we got the movies with the, the Oscar Awards being named after Oscar Michelle, which was a black man. Okay, let's get into some inventions. Alexander biology, mathematics, and medical space exploration, among others. African inventors have suffered from injustice, racism, and persecution, all of which have had an impact on their creativity. Between 1870 and 1940, Economist Lisa D. Cook linked lower creativity to violence against African Americans and a lack of legal protections in a 2014 study. And as a result, over the almost 400-year history of American slavery, these slave owners sought to claim credit for their enslaved innovations. And as a result, there's no way of knowing how many or, in some cases, which ideas should be ascribed to black innovators. Thus started a long history of black innovators who were able to patent their brilliant ideas, many of which are still in use today. Among these, below are a handful of the most widely utilized. Alexander Miles was an American inventor and businessman best known for receiving a patent for elevator doors that automatically open and close. On October 11, 1887, he received U.S. Patent Number 371207. Alexander Miles, the son of Michael and Mary Miles, was born in 1838 in Washington, D.C., near Circleville, Ohio. 
Miles lived in the adjacent town of Chillicothe, Ohio, but later relocated to Waukesha, Wisconsin, to work as a barber. Elevator doors had to be manually closed at the time. Okay, that's Alexander Miles. The comparable system of automated elevator door shutting was given a patent 13 years. The wide extent of its impact on the global is one of the most urgent medical concerns today, not only because of its effects on the human body, but also because of the wide extent of its impact on the global population. Meet Arthur Zhang a young inventor from one of the world's so-called poorest countries who invented the cardiopad, a medical device that can be used to perform heart... ...medic and natural history. He was self-taught and had little or no official schooling when he was born in Baltimore County, Maryland, to a free African-American lady and a former slave. He rose to prominence after aiding Major Andrew Ellicott in a survey that determined the initial boundaries of the area of Columbia, the United States. Okay, that's Benjamin Banneker. By carving each piece to size, he appears to have modeled his clock after a borrowed pocket watch. Banneker lived with his mother and sisters after his father died. Okay, so that's Benjamin Banneker. Elijah McCoy and moved to the United States as a small boy when his family returned in 1847, which were with steam engine lubrication. He was born free in Canada and moved to the United States as a small boy when his family returned. Yeah, this voice is killing me, but this the is a George McCoy Elijah family McCoy here. Family had established themselves on the property of John and Mary. Yeah, this, this lady's voice is killing me here. That digital voice is killing me. But I just wanted to uh, give you a few examples of what black people have done in this country. And um, let's look for some more. Keep forgetting I could just always do this. Black American inventions. Blood banks, personal computers, or affordable shoes. From the traffic light to the ironing board, these innovative creations and many more wouldn't exist today if it weren't for the brilliant minds of these African-American inventors. Now, all of these inventors are, were either slaves or the descendants of slaves. They didn't come from ancient Kemet. They didn't come from uh, Hebrew Israelites from three, 4,000 years ago. These are most of our direct descendants here in America. Jennings was the first African-American person to receive a patent in the United States, paving the way for future inventors of color to gain exclusive rights to their inventions. Born in 1791, Jennings lived and worked in New York City as a tailor and dry cleaner. He invented an early morning of dry cleaning and dry scoring and patented in 1821. People objected to an African-American receiving a patent but Jennings had a loophole. He was a free man. Thomas Jennings invented dry cleaning uh, machinery. Madam C.J. Walker, we all know about her hair care products, right? I also believe she might have been the first uh, female millionaire in America. Millionaire. Her early life was free love in 1867. Madam C.J. Walker is often referred to as America's first self-made female millionaire. There you go. Early life was filled with... That's Madam C.J. Walker. Sarah Boone invented the ironing board. It's Sarah Boone. To receive a patent, she expanded upon the original... 
Garrett Morgan invented the gas, the gas mask. mask and the traffic signal. And the his traffic signal. His problem solving skills propelled him to success at the beginning of his career. Okay, I'm just speeding through this a little bit. Alexander Miles. Riding a leap to Forgetting to do so led to multiple accidents as people fell down elevator shafts. When the daughter of Af He's the one that invented the elevator doors, Alexander Miles. Philip Downing invented the mailbox. Street lighter box, and it is the predecessor of today's mailbox. It would protect mail from theft. Where's this guy? T91. Anyone. Shirley Ann Jackson, caller ID and call waiting. Brown in August 1946, Shirley Ann Jackson is a physicist, researcher, and inventor. She was the first African American woman to earn a PhD from the Massachusetts Institute. Jan Ernst Metzliger, I can't pronounce his name here. Lasting shoe machine. In the 19th century, the average person couldn't afford shoes. This changed thanks to Jan S. Mazalega, an immigrant from Dutch Guyana, now Suriname. Mazalega invented an automated machine that attached a shoe's upper parts to its sole. Once it was refined, the device could make 700 pairs of shoes each day. A Wow, okay. Uh, and we can go on and on here. My whole point here is that there's a rich heritage in this country of descendants of slaves and slaves themselves. Oh, I got to get to George Washington Carver, of course. One of the most well-known African-American inventor of his time. Growing up, he often switched schools and lived with different foster families throughout the South eventually earning his diploma at Minneapolis High School. Shortly after, he became a farmer until he went back to school. In 1891, Kava was the first black student at Iowa State Agricultural College, where he received both his bachelor's and master's degrees. He helped the poor agrarians by teaching them about fertilization and crop rotation, and since the region's primary crop was cotton, which drains nutrients from the soil, Cover conducted studies to determine which Yeah, this lady's accent is terrible too. I'm sorry. To like and share with but the point is uh the, the point is we have a lot to be proud of in this country from our, our slave descendants uh to the descendants themselves of slaves that invented many things in this country, including the bicycle frame, um, so on and so forth, where a lot of these guys is claiming these religions, Hebrew Israelite and claiming black Spanish more and claiming to be Jews and claiming to be uh, Muslims and claiming this and claiming that. I feel a lot of them are ashamed of their slave heritage. They never want to put that on a pedestal because it doesn't sound cool uh it doesn't give them a boost to their morale and their ego but we have a lot to be thankful for for our immediate ancestors what they endured during slavery what they uh persevered and how they triumphed and created many things scientifically medically engineering um psychology so on and so forth uh that uh creations that are still here with us today and a lot of you guys reaching for these different sects of religious beliefs. And, and um, a lot of you want to believe you from ancient Aztec dynasties and, and, and Egyptian uh, pharaohs and, and kings and queens. Listen, I'm going to say this again. Royalty is never more than 1% of a given country. All right. And everyone else is subjects to the royal to the royal uh family who's ever ruling whether they're in africa europe asia china india it's all the same okay they're way more subjects and than they are rulers so all of these guys claiming to come from royal lineage to come from kings and queens they're quite delusional 
they don't want to accept that they might have came from a normal farming family somewhere, uh, living a simple life, growing fruits and vegetables and taking care of animals. They don't want to accept that. They want to believe that they were uh, direct descendants of, of, of kings and pharaohs and queens and so on and so forth. And you even have a lot of silly things like uh, some black feminist women holding on to this idea that California was ruled by all Amazon women and a queen named California or Khalifa or something like that. Fine, there might have been a queen there, but to say that the entire uh, uh, state of California was ruled by Amazon women and it was all women, it's just ridiculous. How would they reproduce? You cannot have a, a, a area of all women the same way you can't have a, a area with all men. That just biologically doesn't make sense. But anyway, I'm not going to make this a super long video. I just want to bring awareness and attention to the fact that we have a lot to be proud of from our slave ancestors. They shouldn't be brushed to the side, skipped over to go look in two, three, four thousand years into our history and skip over the, the last four or five hundred years of what our people endured and triumphed over. All right. This has been Rand Social. Peace.